The California Faculty Union and the California State University are in a 48-hour media blackout. Find out what this could mean for the upcoming strike. Delta Chi has been suspended by Cal Poly after the second reported ass assault at a Delta Chi event. And the new ASI presidential candidates were announced earlier this week. Stay tuned to find out what you need to know about who is running. Broadcasting live from Cal Poly in beautiful San Luis Obispo, this is Mustang News. Hello and welcome to Mustang News. Here with this week's top stories, I'm Laura Hoover. And I'm Dylan Ring. According to an email from CFA, the efforts to settle contract disputes have intensified between the California Faculty Association and the California State University Management. Currently, both parties are still in the 48-hour media blackout. The blackout period allows for negotiations to continue without interruption. But both parties are not allowed to talk to media or continue strike preparations. The blackout was prompted when talks resumed with the CSU management after the release of a fact finder report ahead of the looming strike. For the first time, the CFA says the Chancellor has participated directly in these talks. The hope is that the talks between the two will avert the upcoming system-wide strike that is scheduled to begin on April 13th. A joint press conference between CFA leaders and CSU administrators will take place on this Friday, April 8th in Sacramento. The Delta Chi fraternity is now on suspension because of a second reported sexual assault. A woman reported being assaulted at a party by an unknown male at an off-campus party. The party took place at a home affiliated with Delta Chi on March 31st. The previous assault happened at Delta Chi event on March 4th. The suspension takes effect immediately while the university's Dean of Students office investigates. Delta Chi President and Civil, Civil Engineering Senior Stephen Pollock told Mustang News he doesn't consider the event or the home to be Delta Chi affiliated. He says three of the seven roommates at the home are Delta Chi members. The other four, not affiliated with Greek life. A recent Cal Poly graduate passed away last week after suffering a severe brain injury. Danny McBroom hit his head on a concrete surface and the injuries were fatal, according to the GoFundMe page set up by James Pilkington. McBroom graduated last month with a degree in environmental engineering. He was set to start working at an engineering firm in July in Oregon after spring commencement in June. Some of the donors to the GoFundMe page wrote messages for the family showing their support. Visit GoFundMe.com slash Danny Broom, McBroom for the more information. The ASI presidential candidates and board of directors candidates were made public earlier this week at ASI's Media Day. This year there are 13 running for the College of Agriculture, 7 for the College of Architecture, 13 for the College of Business, 8 for the College of Engineering, 16 for the College of Liberal Arts, and 3 for the College of Science and Math. Media Day was created last year as a way for candidates to be officially announced and to avoid early publishing of their names. Many students running for a board of directors position in each college showed up. There are two candidates running for ASI president this year, junior agriculture science major Jana Colombini and senior mechanical engineering major Isaias Diaz. Each candidate has their own reasons for deciding to run. Colombini is a third generation Cal Poly student and has been involved with ASI since her freshman year. I decided to run for ASI president because I believe I have a lot of passion. I have a lot of passion for not only Cal Poly, but the community itself. I believe in shared governance and equal representation. So I want to make sure that I bring that into next year. And I believe that because I've been in student government the past two years, I really know how to serve students. If elected, she says her plans can be summed up in three words. Care, communicate, and connect. Meantime, Diaz says that the lack of relationship between Cal Poly and the community is muffling the student's voice in San Luis Obispo. I have a vision for Cal Poly to be a safe and growth promoting environment where the best possible college experience is possible to all students, regardless of their gender, race, beliefs, or socioeconomic background, because it is ultimately experience that proves to be the most valuable tool in a learning environment. He hopes to encourage students to attend city council meetings in order to bridge that gap. If elected, he plans to improve the student environment by increasing community relations, creating more diversity and an inclusive environment, and enriching the campus social scene. An open forum for the presidential candidates and board of directors candidates will be held on Tuesday, April 12th at 11 a.m. in the University Union. Voting will be held April 20th and 21st. With the faculty strike taking place during open house, student committees are left planning around an awkward situation. Harrison Riley has more on how not much has changed for the College of Agricultural's open house planning. Every year at Cal Poly's open house, thousands of prospective ag students walk through the cafe's farm shop to enjoy a burger, 
talk to faculty and students, and chat about the opportunities available in the College of Agriculture. This year, to reach that burger and to have that conversation, prospective students might have to cross picket lines. We don't really anticipate that the strikes are really going to impact open house. Uh, we know that teachers are going to be striking, you know, and they have their picket lines out at certain points on campus. But we know that students and parents are here to really experience Cal Poly. And they're going to experience that side of Cal Poly, but that's not going to stop them from learning about the College of Ag and us providing them everything that we have to offer. The College of Ag open house is a massive undertaking. Volunteers have to guide and feed 1,800 prospective students. Despite this, the committee is acting like there is no strike happening. Planning and execution is largely unchanged from the previous years, a testament to the students involved in the College of Ag. Kind of letting it happen, we don't really have anything prepared for people to say about the strike. Um, we just, we know that we have a job to do as far as open house goes for College of Agriculture, and we're going to make sure it gets done. Harrison Riley, Mustang News. Students will have the chance to network with a growing list of more than 140 employers next week at the Spring Career Fair. Peter Gonzalez has a preview of what students can expect. Eileen Becker, the Director of Career Services, says businesses, engineering firms, and computer science industry representatives will be there, but students from every major are encouraged to attend. Um, those companies are coming to campus. They are interested in those majors, but we also you, students also need to know that there's other divisions and departments in all these large firms. Students will have the opportunity before the fair to upload their resumes on mustangjobs.com and research the companies that will be at the fair. Becker says the career fair should give students a boost of confidence because Cal Poly's reputation attracts businesses to campus. Students um, are getting good teaching and, and learning through their academic departments and through their internships, that students are very, very well-rounded and employers are interested in Cal Poly talent and students. And For Mustang News, Peter Gonzalez. The career fair will be held. The career fair will be held in the Rec Center gym on April 13th and 14th from 9.30 to 1.30. Cal Poly students are just finishing up the second week of the spring quarter. However, some are feeling far more burdened by the coursework than is expected at this time. Here is Amelia Pereira with the story. With spring quarter just barely kicking off, Cal Poly students are already feeling the pressure. Second year business major Sabina Kadar is one to have a busy course load. Yeah, this quarter um, is pretty stressful. I'm only in 12 units, which usually I take 16, but I already can tell that it's gonna be a busy quarter. Two of my classes are marketing classes, so they have group projects. Mechanical engineering senior Chris San Nicholas has a pretty packed schedule himself. So I usually wake up, um, go to class and then sometimes I have work so that's an extra like four hours of work um, and that's actually taking away a lot of time so, and then after after work I usually have class again and then I have group projects or meetings or stuff like that and then after that I can work on my own homework and then that's the end of my day pretty much stay in school Amelia Pereira Mustang News for more information on student stress you can go to the Cal Poly Health education website at www.hcs.calpoly.edu slash pulse. Coming up after the break, find out how some students manage schoolwork and a family at the same time. And a look into an on-campus resource that gives free groceries to Cal Poly students in need. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents open their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. 
They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. My new mom and I have a lot in common. <sighs> the great outside. We both love the outdoors. So shiny. That's not a flower. We both love geology. Oh, look. An igneous one. That's not a rock. And she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. <gasps> That's not a dog. Hanging out has been kind of fun. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Raising a family is something most Cal Poly students couldn't imagine handling while at school. A Cal Poly club called the Parent Student Alliance works to support students who do both. Do you want to say something? Meet April Capana, a Cal Poly psychology senior and also a mother of two. For Capana, going to class and playing with her son's seven-year-old Thomas and six-year-old Corbin is all in a day's work. Capana is part of the Parent Student Alliance, a Cal Poly club for students who are also parents. It's nice for the kids to see that other parents are in school too. The PSA holds socials throughout the quarter so that parent students can form a community with others with similar lifestyles. PSA president and founder Stacy Aragon said the PSA exists to share the underrepresented experience of parent students. We are not counted as far as statistics go, so we don't have a unified voice on campus, and without that voice, Cal Poly doesn't know that there's a need out there. Aragon founded the PSA last summer, and it's currently comprised of roughly 30 parent students. For students like Capana, balancing academic and family life is often a struggle. Like, focusing on the kids, or focusing on the schoolwork, whichever it is at the time, it's hard to stay focused on. Kapana said, although the balance can be tough, at the end of the day, it's worth it for the kids. I don't know if I'd have the motivation to go to school if I didn't have the kids. The Avenue is currently undergoing renovation this quarter to accommodate for more service and seating in the Avenue. Renovation of the avenue is part of Campus Dining's larger plan to replace the Vista Grande Dining Hall with a new state-of-the-art facility by fall of 2018. Beginning at the avenue in the fall of 2016, there will be a new burger bar and an updated fusion bowl venue featuring Thai and Vietnamese flavors. Also planned for this fall, the avenue will extend its hours to be open until 2 a.m. Monday through Friday and will be open on the weekends. I think that uh, having the Ave open till 2 a.m. or really late would be really convenient actually because um, in places places near the library, um, food places, they close pretty early, especially during finals and dead week when you need a late night snack um, and the only place you can go is like Subway or order something to the library. It could be nice to have a cheap healthy snack close by. Construction for the Vista Grande Dining Complex is set for the summer of 2016, while construction for the avenue is set to be complete by the summer. A resource on the Cal Poly campus called the Food Pantry at Pulse gives free food and supplies to students in need. All students need to do to gain access to the pantry is swipe their ID card at the Pulse Center, no questions asked. Students are given a Pulse backpack which they can fill to the top with food and supplies of all different sorts. The pantry houses a full refrigerator where students can pick up frozen burritos, cheeses, yogurts, and more. It also has non-perishable goods such as pastas, rice, beans, and soups. The foods in the pantry come from other campus entity donations, but food isn't the only thing they supply. I like to just the calm roommate situations. If that, if you're not pulling your weight with the dish soap, the TP, those kind of things, I like to have some of those things here as well. The food pantry also offers a handful of healthy food options like quinoa, vegetables, and eggs. Pulse facilitators even give advice and guidance on how to cook healthy meals with the food they provide. Food pantry users say the helpers at Pulse always make you feel comfortable. 
everybody here is beyond nice. Um, everybody's willing to help you out no matter who you are or what's going on. And they just give you the benefit of the doubt always. The food pantry is located on the lower floor of the health center and is open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Cal Poly's Horticulture and Crop Science Unit hosts its annual Tomato Mania this coming weekend. This annual enterprise project is organized by six student volunteers, some of whom have worked on this same event before. The sale this year has over 70 different varieties of plants, from tiny Tim tomatoes to watermelon beefsteak. The plants were sown back in the February, and the heated temperatures have helped the plants to almost three feet tall. Two students that are a part of the six volunteers and tell us how the plants and event is organized. Yeah, yeah, so we grow them from seed. Um, and so right now we have about 3,500 plants right now. Um, in previous years it have been 6,000, so it just depends on the year. We're trying to get to a nice um, number of plants grown and sold. We sell most of them, most of them. And then some we can grow here. We have a little employee garden that we grow and then can have some too for us, so that's fun. What we are currently in the poly house, it's the most um, rustic or simple greenhouses that we have. It creates a good, warm, humid environment when all the parts are working well together for happy tomatoes. And they're, they're doing great. And it's amazing that just like two months ago they were seeds. It's really, really cool. Plants are awesome. The tomato plants can be purchased this coming Friday and Saturday at the Poly Plant Shop located within Building 48 across from the H14 parking lot. Coming up after the break, we'll show you this week's weather forecast. We taught him how to hit a baseball, how to hit a receiver, the strike zone, the net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlo, oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. A Hi, welcome to weather. My name is Kevin Schindler. Let's look at these weather forecasts for the week. So just today you can see uh, 72 up in Paso Robles um, and you can see just descending temperatures down as we go more south. Uh, we're with 69 here in San Luis Obispo. And uh, let's go on to the South County. So you can see some most of the same temperatures, 70s, upper 60s, um, and temperatures, uh, the lows down in the uh, low 50s. So definitely some cold nights coming up. Um, and then let's go over to the beaches. You can see that the uh, Cayucos there is at 66. Uh, Morro Bay is at 66 as well. Avila Beach is at 67. And Pismo Beach is at 69. And uh, let me go over this way. Frociano is at 68. Uh, and all of lows, of course, in uh, the low 50s as well. So let's go to the five-day forecast. This is just for San Luis Obispo. You can see that Thursday, uh, where we are right now, it's going to be cloudy. Friday is when the rain's going to start, and Saturday is actually when there's going to be the most rain, but also the most warmth. 
at 70 degrees. Um, Sunday is going to continue the rain for just a little bit longer, and Monday is also going to be rainy. Uh, temperatures are going to be on a cooling, cooling trend, although, like I said, Saturday is going to be 70, and of course, the lows are all in the low 50s to upper 40s, even, when we come to the lift. So that's about the weather uh, that we have today. So we're going to go over to the break. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. What's going on, guys? I'm David Klein, and this is your Cal Poly Sports Update. Cal Poly had its annual pro day to allow athletes to show off their athletic skill in front of attending NFL scouts to enhance their chances of playing in the National Football League. Quarterback Chris Brown was one of four Cal Poly players to show off their athletic skills in front of NFL scouts last week. With a school record of 38 touchdowns in his career as a Mustang, Brown was not only tested for his passing skills, but also tested in his abilities as a wide receiver and a defensive back. Head coach Tim Walsh praised his former quarterback on his pro day efforts. Threw the box extraordinarily well. I was really surprised he looked mechanically better. Uh, and then I also think that he did well at the wide receiver and defensive back drills, which are difficult to become a master of that many different things in a short period of time. Linebacker Burton DeConan measured in at 6 foot 1 inch and weighed in at 236 pounds. He had a 33 inch vertical leap and went 10 feet 2 inches in the standing broad jump. The 2016 NFL Draft will be held April 28th to the 30th with the Tennessee Titans owning the first overall selection. The Cal Poly baseball team will be hosting Cal State Fullerton this weekend in the first conference series of the season. The Mustangs stand at 17 and 10 on the season, fourth best in the conference. The Mustangs have dropped three of their last four games, and Fullerton will present an early season challenge. At 17 and 11, the Titans are undefeated in conference play and won the Big West last season before making it to the NCAA Super Regionals. A strong showing at, the home, uh, at home against the defending conference champion would put the Mustangs near the top of the Big West. The first game of the series is Friday at 6 p.m. at Baggett Stadium. Cal Poly men's soccer will begin their very early preseason with a set of friendlies over the course of the next few weeks. Cal Poly will begin their fixtures Saturday night with a matchup against Fresno State at 7 p.m., followed by a doubleheader the following Saturday, April 16th, with a 10 a.m. matchup against Santa Clara and 7 p.m. against San Jose State. And, the, and even though it's just a friendly, the Cal Poly Derby will be held April 23rd against Cal Poly Pomona, and the last game of the spring will be held uh, May 8th versus Cal State Monterey Bay. All games will be held at Spanos, and all games are free to attend. Well, guys, that's it we have for Cal Poly Sports this week. You can always go check out gopoly.com for any more sports updates. Guys, back to you on the desk. Coming, back, coming up after the break, the Chainsmokers were on campus. 
last week. Stick around to see our exclusive footage of their performance. I will not be news today. I will not make another push to be the first man in space with frosted tips and a puka shell necklace. And I will not go viral when my terror is caught on camera when I finally realize that in the vacuum of space, no one can hear you sing. I'm Lance Bass, and I will not be trending today because there is a much bigger story that needs to be heard. Thanks for coming in for the interview. Oh, yeah, of course. All right, we got your personal references, your resume, high school diploma or equivalent. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Yes, it's right there. Great. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. I never felt all that special. But in the wake of an earthquake, we can all do something. When donating goods, it's hard to know what's needed. So now it's my turn to help. Aid workers can spend me locally, or I can help save lives. Someone is doing better because of me. Cal Poly hosted the Chainsmokers last Wednesday at the Rec Center after a students funded a tilt campaign to bring them to campus. We'll leave you with some footage from the concert. I'm Laura Hoover. Dylan Ring, thank you for watching Mustang News.